Is Apple finally acknowledging the AI war it's fighting, whether it admits it or not? Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in around five minutes or less. Well, friends, an unexpected thing happened yesterday. Apple finally showed up to the AI wars. One of the big questions ever since ChatGPT launched, really, but especially since companies including Microsoft and Google and Amazon all absolutely went into a flurry to try to stake their claim around artificial intelligence, has been when Apple was going to get in the game and what they were going to do. Recently, it seems as though there has been more action on that front. We've had reports that they're spending millions of dollars a day training their own models. And more recently, we heard that the next iOS operating system to come out next fall is likely to be AI integrated back to front. Well, yesterday at 8 p.m. Eastern, Apple held a new product event where they announced the latest in their line of iMacs and MacBook Pros. This is notable for one big reason, and that reason is the M3 chip. The M3 is the latest in Apple's custom chip line. And in their presentation about it, AI was a term that they actually used. AI YouTuber Matt Wolf wrote, Damn, my video editing workflow may be moving over to Mac pretty soon. And they've actually said AI at least twice in their presentation. Never expected to hear that from Apple. Yi Ding wrote, For those of us in the AI space, this was the most interesting part of Apple's M3 announcement yesterday. You can now run the biggest open source LLM, Falcon, with 180 billion parameters with low quality loss on a 14-inch laptop. What a time to be alive. Indeed, Inc.'s summary of the event focused in on this topic as well, saying, with the M3, Apple is finally talking about AI. During the event, for example, they said, with the M3, the neural engine is up to 60% faster than in the M1 family of chips, making AI ML workflows even faster while keeping data on device to preserve privacy. The Inc. piece goes on. Apple even went as far as to highlight that the increased memory capacity on the M3 Max supports, quote, workflows previously not possible on a laptop, such as AI developers working with even larger transformer models with billions of parameters. As Inc. sums up, Apple isn't just talking about the features it builds into its own products that take advantage of its own capabilities, but is also explicitly positioning its new MacBook Pros as a tool for developers building AI products. That's a pretty significant change. Now, this also validates what people have been assuming about part of what Apple's AI strategy would be, which is effectively racing to have the hardware catch up to a point where Apple doesn't have to compromise on its long-held positions around running applications on device rather than having to rely on the cloud and focusing on user privacy. My commitment to you, the AI Breakdown listeners, is that I will, for the sake of science, buy the most powerful M3 Max MacBook Pro model and tell you how it works. Next up, a company that was in the news recently for raising a bunch of money is now back in the news for raising even more money. The information writes, Mistral, a wannabe open AI of Europe, seeks $300 million. Now, this is a company that raised a $113 million seed round over the summer, four months ago to be exact. Now, the roster of talent included former Meta and Alphabet researchers, and more than that, the open-source Mistral 7B model that they put out has quickly become a favorite of developers. The information says that the round is expected to value the company at over a billion dollars. Pre-money. The information also writes, Mistral is also developing its products in line with stricter European regulations like the European Union's AI Act, and has emphasized privacy and security according to its pitch deck. The information speculates that could help it beat out OpenAI and other companies like it when it comes to attracting European corporate customers. Now, while developers have loved Mistral, there has been some controversy around its open source approach, which lacks some of the safety guardrails that other closed models include. If you want to read their deck, which is actually a seven-page strategic memo, I will include that in the show notes. Now, moving to our next story, one of the things that we have talked about as a key theme for this fall is the integration of AI into the workflows and experiences that we already have. Well, as this story suggests, sometimes that integration is going to be a little bit bumpy. When The Guardian published an article about a woman found dead at a school in Australia, Microsoft's news aggregator, Microsoft Start, created an AI-generated poll designed to increase user engagement with the fairly distasteful question, what do you think is the reason behind this woman's death? Murder, accident, or suicide? Now, of course, Microsoft pulled the poll, but there was some serious reputational harm already caused. The Guardian wrote a scathing letter to Microsoft President Brad Smith. Microsoft has so far not commented. Over in China, Chinese tech giants continue to release upgraded AI models to keep the pressure on U.S. rivals. Alibaba announced the 2.0 version of their model, as well as a Gen AI service platform, which is designed to help companies build their own generative AI applications using their own data. In this way, the company is competing with both Azure as well as AWS's Bedrock. Next up, as earnings season continues on, market watchers have a close eye on AMD. 
AMD has anticipated to release its MI300 chip this quarter, and the product is seen as key in AMD's battle to try to keep pace with market leader NVIDIA. AMD shares were up 2.1% in the hours before the call and are up 47% on the year overall. Now, speaking of NVIDIA, a little inside baseball from that company, apparently they are piloting a generative AI specifically for their engineers called Chip Nemo. In what is something of a dogfooding moment, the company's CTO in a keynote on Monday talked about how they have been testing a specific LLM to boost the productivity of their chip designers. The model is custom designed and trained on NVIDIA data with three different purposes in mind as a chatbot, as an EDA tool scriptwriter, and as a summarizer of bug reports. Another AI integration experiment comes from Siemens and Microsoft, who are collaborating on something called the Siemens Industrial Copilot Scheme. The idea is to bring generative AI to industries including manufacturing, transportation, and healthcare. Reuters writes, the project will create AI copilots to assist staff at customer companies as they design new products and organize production and maintenance. It examines information gathered by Siemens and helps customers quickly create, improve, and debug complex automation codes and shorten simulation times at their factories and other facilities. So there you have it, friends. Tons going on. Lots of big company engagement. Lots of startup action. It is a very fast-moving fall here in the world of AI. And I appreciate you hanging out here at the AI Breakdown to try to keep track of it all. That's going to do it for the AI Breakdown Brief. Next up, the main AI Breakdown.